ETN Sports. This is Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Hello everyone and welcome to Grizzly Insider here on the Montana Television Network. I'm your host, Kyle Hansen. For the first time this season, both Montana's men's and women's basketball teams picked up sweeps at the same time as it was a 4-0 week for the Grizz. The Grizz men won a pair of thrillers over Northern Colorado and Northern Arizona here in Missoula, while the Lady Grizz beat the Bears and topped the Lumberjacks in overtime as both teams extended their winning streaks. Coming up, we have coaches Chris Cobb and Brian Holsinger in studio to talk about those games. And we'll also be joined by Grizz guard Lonel Martin Jr. in studio. But first, let's recap the week that was for UM basketball. The Grizz men were home this week, taking on Northern Colorado and Northern Arizona. UM beat Northern Colorado in Greeley in one of their better performances of the season. But on Thursday, it was another close call, as Montana let a lead slip late before holding off the Bears 69-67. to Then on Saturday, it was the men's turn to wear the turquoise jerseys as part of the Nike N7 initiative celebrating Native American heritage that UM was participating in for the first time this year. For the second straight game, it was Anand Moody who came up big for the Grizzlies as he scored 26 points in the contest and knocked down seven three-pointers as UM would take a 37-33 lead into halftime after Moody buried a buzzer beater. Second half was a back and forth contest as Moody began getting some help on offense from the rest of his teammates as the Grizz carried a slim lead for most of the half. But late, NAU took a four point lead as Carson Tout converted a three point play with under three minutes to go. But after a Moody three pointer to get Montana within one, Josh Vazquez came up with a huge steal and layup to give Montana the lead again. After two NAU free throws, Brandon Whitney sealed it with a put back off of his own miss to make it 67 to 66 and the Grizzlies got the final stop they needed to get the win and sweep their homestand. On the road, the Lady Grizz picked up a 78 to 61 win over Northern Colorado and then won 80 to 76 in overtime at NAU as Sammy Fatkin scored 27 points and Carmen G. Feller had a double double as Montana won its fourth straight game. Coming up, Grizz men's coach Chris Cobb joins us in studio to talk about Montana's two wins. That's next on Grizzly Insider. There's more coverage of the Grizzlies online anytime at montanasports.com. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. We're back on Grizzly Insider, and our first guest is associate head coach for the Montana Grizzlies, Chris Cobb. Chris, good to have you here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. You know, big weekend for you guys with the, the sweep over Northern Colorado and Northern Arizona. So coming in here off a 2-0 weekend for the first time this year, how does that feel? Feels really good, right? Uh, second time we've won three in a row and, and hopefully uh, can find some consistency after this. And I think we've had so many close games that have, have been tough or come down to the wire or lost on a last second shot or the last minute. Uh, it's nice to be on the other end of a few of those and, and uh, feeling good and hopefully we can kind of allow that to catapult us into a, a good run here, good stretch. You guys are in the second half of conference season now and the season's kind of been defined by those close losses and close games in general. And so to walk away from a weekend with two wins over two good programs whose records I don't think really indicate how good those teams are. Just, you know, how, what has that done for the team? Like, did you notice any differences over the weekend? Yeah, I think any time that, that you can close some of these games out and you can win some of them, you, you see it, right? You take a deep breath and you say, okay, we're, we're good. Um, I think, you know, our staff always talks about it. If we win that first Eastern game, things are a lot different, right? You're 1-0 as opposed to 0-1 and kind of playing catch up and having belief. I think one of the most powerful things in this is that Eastern plays like a team that's undefeated and they go into every game thinking they're going to win. And we've been on that side of it where winning is powerful and it's contagious and it just keeps happening. And so you need a few of those late games you need a few of those games to go your way to have that feeling and have that momentum and we just haven't had it since conference has happened uh, we had it during that stretch in december uh, that i thought was really powerful and i think we thought we were going to start doing that and then lineups and rotations haven't been as consistent as we've liked and um, that's no excuse that's just what you have to do and you have to find a way to, to get it done so hopefully we can start building off that now what was maybe the biggest uh, reason for uh, closing out the games this week? Because it's been kind of an issue uh, in a couple of games this year. You know, why was, why was this weekend, why, why was that corner turned a bit? I'll be honest, Kyle, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think we've, we've worked hard at it. We've tried to do a little bit more in practice as far as figuring out this is what we're going to do and, and up to 
you know, with 30 seconds left or whatnot. I think a couple of themes have happened throughout the season where tough fouls, right? And so you saw that even in the NAU game where we fouled uh, Fuller there at the end and he made the two free throws. But, you know, it's getting key stops. It's making key baskets. It's figuring out matchups and how we're going to get the big shot and how we're going to make it. Uh, Whitney did a great job to be able to do that. Linnell was phenomenal in, in his you know defense, full court against Fuller to not foul, contest the shot, and then we went and got the rebound, right? So there's a lot of different factors. So I think our luck hasn't been great. We haven't been great as, as far as creating our own luck. But these last couple games, Portland State, Northern Colorado, and, and NAU, we've been able to close them out. In that Northern Colorado game, you know, it's kind of another one coming down to the wire. I think you guys have the nine-point lead, and, you know, they kind of chip away like they did down in Greeley. And so uh, what was kind of the, the message and the feeling around the team, especially, you know, those reviews and things like that, and the game kind of stretched out, but yeah. you guys were able to hold on down the stretch. Yeah, it's a good team. It's a good team, right? They're picked second for a reason uh, in, in the media poll and, and the coaches poll. Um, they have a, a very good uh, group of guards that has individual talent, maybe the best three uh, in the league if you start looking at just what – they brought back and what they've done in the you know previous seasons. Um, so we felt really good about it. I think any win that you get in this conference right now, when you look top to bottom, you know NAU goes over to MSU and right down to the wire, they have to make a shot at the at the buzzer to win the game. Uh, you know, and it, you know Eastern goes to NAU and uh, and struggles to win, and they have to make a shot at the end. So any win's a good win, and we'll take it. And, and like I said, build off of it and take the things that we did well and, and try to replicate it and. Uh, the things that we need, that we struggle with, we, we clean up and, and move on. Did you notice maybe winning a Thursday game changed things going into Saturday at all? Like, did, was there any difference there? Because NAU, you guys are down four late and are able to and gut it out and down one, you know, like you mentioned, off the free throws. Like, did you notice any difference after coming off a win? I think there's always a little bit easier time prepping for the game, right? I mean, when you're, those Fridays are hard. When you lose Thursday and, and you come back Friday, it's late nights. Uh, it's, you know, how, what did we do wrong? How can we change it going into the game? You know, as coaches, it's how are the, how are the guys going to respond, right? After a, a win, what are they going to do? We know we've responded pretty well for the most part after losses, coming back focused. Um, so I think that was one of the things as a coach that you're looking at and saying, what do we need to do to make sure they show up Saturday ready to go and engaged? Here's the thing. Any team in this league can beat anybody um, top to bottom. I, I really do feel that way. And so I think the guys know that and they know that we need to be able to show up and ready to go. Another huge road trip for you guys, Idaho State and Weber State. Three game winning streak and second time of the season, like you mentioned. So how do you guys maybe harness that momentum and keep it going now that you guys have kind of kicked off the second half uh, pretty well in, in conference play? Keep believing, you know, I think uh, you see it on the bench. The guys will get into the game, you know, as we start playing well, we start doing the things that we're supposed to do. You know, it's two good teams, right? Idaho State and Weber are two good teams that are playing well. I think we owe one to Weber. It's always a big game. I always think that outside of Montana State, uh, Eastern and Weber are the two rivals that uh, have been good in this league for the last 10 to 20 years, 30 for Weber. So uh, it's always a big game when Montana plays Weber. And then Idaho State's playing well. It's a huge week. Every week, every game is a big game for us as far as seeding and where we're at coming to March. But I think the biggest thing is we're we're starting to play well in, here in February and, and want to carry that over into March. Well, good luck this week, Chris. Great to have you here. Thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate and, it. And coming up, we'll be joined by Grizz guard Lonnell Martin Jr. to talk about this past week and some community service he's done back in his hometown. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, and we are joined by Montana guard Lonel Martin Jr. Lonel, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Appreciate Absolutely. Yeah. Big, big weekend for you guys with the two wins, two close wins over North, Northern Colorado and um, Northern Arizona. Just give me your thoughts from a player's perspective, what it was like to finally get that first sweep of the season. Uh, it's big. I think it's uh, really good for our confidence. I think uh, part of the season, win one, lose one, you're kind of take a toll on confidence, especially losing those close games. And uh, winning the close games, it definitely, definitely helps us with like the part of like getting down to the last two minutes, believing that we can finish this through. So I think that was good for us. When you guys have so many close games like this and all the splits and you know the Thursday losses and things like that, did it feel different after this weekend when you guys finally got that sweep and kind of got over that hump? Uh, it definitely felt felt different. I feel like you, like you appreciate it more because I feel like we had a lot of controversy. And so it feels good to know that we, we were able to battle through that and figure it out so 
we were kind of laughing about it off camera because so many close games have happened for this team this yeah. year. You guys have had just a couple of games that were really like fairly decided, you know, but so you guys have been a part of so many games like this, you know, but so to be on the right end after so many close losses, I mean, that had to be such a big deal for you guys too to know that you guys finally were able to kind of hold on down the, uh, the end of a stretch of a game. Yeah, definitely. I feel like our um, we had a a lot of close games this year that could have went either way. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't go our way, so our record definitely could be different, but it is what it is, and I think we're, we're starting to pick it up. So When you look at that Northern Colorado game, kind of another game where you guys have a, I think it was like a nine-point lead in the second half, and then they kind of chip away like they did when you guys were down in Greeley. Just what was maybe the message and the feeling around the team kind of in those final minutes as you guys uh, were looking to hold them off? Uh, just to believe and uh, get stops, no matter what happens on offense and we just got to go down there, get stops, rebound, and finish it out because we, we deserve to be there and yeah yeah and you guys got the sweep over them and then again you host northern arizona on saturday northern arizona is a team that got you guys in a close overtime game down in flagstaff so to get that one um you know just what was the mentality kind of in that one because you know they were leading by four you know with about two minutes to go and you guys were able to, to pull it out yeah the, so we, we definitely had a chip on our shoulder for that game that's a game we went down there to arizona and thought we, we should have won it was a close one unfortunately it just didn't swing our way again and it feels good to get that chip off our shoulder and and then roll into another one get another one saturday so i think we're on a roll a good time to be on a roll yeah right here in february and everything so yeah. well no this is your second year with the team it i guess how would you kind of describe what it's been like this year because your role last year you know you were kind of like the three-point guy and this year you still have that but you know you've been kind of defense energy you know kind of hyping people up you know what's it been like in year two for you here with the Grizzlies? I've been enjoying it. It's definitely been a roller coaster. There's been a lot of things to figure it out, but I think it's like it's been good things. It's been good problems, good controversy that'll help you off the court later down the road and uh, really just trying to do what I can to help us win and whatever that is. Coming into the summer, did it feel different than as opposed to two years of community college? Like what was the feeling for you? Like did it feel maybe a little more normal because you were, you know, you've been with the program for a year at this point? Oh, definitely. I think I felt a little bit more comfortable coming in this year. Uh, last year, I think I was a little bit on edge and kind of nervous in a bit, trying to find where I fit in. And I think this year it was, it was a lot easier for me to um, get rolling and find a groove and stuff like that. So. Your story is kind of interesting because not many kids from uh, the state of Michigan play here at the University of Montana. Yeah. And, you know, you got a chance to go back this summer and, you know, do some community work to kind of help the Boys and Girls Club there. Can you just kind of tell us what uh, the opportunity you got to do back in uh, your, your community? For sure. So I, I held uh, this little giveaway drive back at home for the Boys and Girls Club and for the community of Flint. And so I'm from Flint, Michigan, so home always has a special place in my heart. So I was able to raise raise a couple thousand dollars and uh, get school supplies and like laptops and stuff for those kids and I was able to talk to them and mentor them and give them a little motivation and give them a reason to be excited about going back to school. So, How did, how did this opportunity come about? Like did you reach out to them? Did they reach out to you? How did you, how were you able to find yourself uh, get in this opportunity to, to do this? Well, it was something I was sitting down with my mom thinking about doing and uh, I had a friend, he, uh, he helped me with all the logistics of the stuff and like set everything up and so once it became something I felt like I could actually do, I followed through with it. So And just what did it mean to you? You know, just to maybe you know spend some time with the kids and get a chance to you know, you don't get to go back home very often but go back and really have an impact back there. Sure, yeah. It it meant a lot. I was uh talking to the kids, I was kinda tearing up because I, I I remember being like one of those kids and someone else was doing this for me and so it was it was really um a special moment for me to be able to do that for them and I hope someone down the road can also do it again so absolutely yeah. big moment for you off the court and obviously on the court things are going well for you guys right now so for you guys what's maybe the biggest stretch you got a big one coming up with idaho state and weber biggest thing for you guys here going forward uh i say the biggest thing is just staying consistent we, we definitely have some things we can work on but um i say yeah that's the biggest thing staying consistent um putting in the work in practice and keeping staying positive and and still still believing that's awesome. Well, uh, kudos to you for the com uh, community service you did back in Flint, Lon Ellen. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, and good luck uh, this upcoming week. Of course, appreciate it. Thank you. You bet. And coming up, we have Lady Grizz head coach Brian Holsinger in studio to talk about their recent road sweep. There's more coverage of the Grizzlies online anytime at montanasports.com. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, and we are joined by Montana Lady Grizz head coach Brian Holsinger. And Brian, I'm talking to you after another sweep, four-game winning streak for you guys right now. Uh, just walk me through this road sweep for you guys against Northern Colorado and Northern Arizona. Really proud of our team. I mean, a great trip. 
uh, you know, obviously at Northern Colorado, a team that, that it, she does a good job. Their coach does a good job, a lot of zone. Uh, we've executed really well against zone, and we did that night. It was nice to, it was a nice to kind of feel comfortable for most of the game. Um, and so, yeah, it was just a really solid win. Those are the ones, you know, before the game, I was really proud. The girls were kind of like, yeah, we expected to win. And I was like, these are the games that really matter, trying to get up for these games and make sure you're ready to play. Um, and, and we did a good job. It showed our maturity. You guys, we, as we talked last week, you guys are coming off the two game, the two wins over SAC and Portland State. Did you feel that momentum carry over into that Northern Colorado game? Yeah, we're getting better. We're just getting better, you know, more confident um, on both sides of the ball, really. And that, you know, it really showed um, against NAU. Obviously, a shootout. Both teams just offensively, lots of fireworks in the first half. And I go into half, and I'm like, are we ever going to play defense? And, and so, this, you know... It, it ends up coming down to some stops in the fourth quarter, really for us, just getting a few stops and not allowing them everything and anything that seemed like it's at, at one point um, to get the win. It's a stinging loss when you guys lost to the Lumberjacks here. It was such a close game, and NAU's yeah. obviously been so good the last few years. So yeah. to go down there and get that overtime win, and you know, I guess what was kind of the catalyst, especially down the stretch, where you guys were able to pull it out? Yeah, I mean, for the whole game, we had some special performances. As, you know, our seniors really stepped up. Carmen was really good and solid. Obviously, Sammy, Sammy Facken was big, but uh, Gina played some really, really good minutes too. So those three seniors just really stepped up. And then obviously, Danny's performance on the glass. I, I think I heard yesterday it was like I don't know third, one of the third best performances ever with 17 rebounds it was pretty impressive and, and so we gutted it out you know I mean it was it wasn't pretty um, there were some gigantic plays down the stretch that kids made and fortunate enough to get some few stops to get a win down there you're starting to see your team win some of these games where there was the Idaho State game on the road then there was Sac State at home and now it's the Northern Arizona win just you know what, what can you say about them finding a way to beat good teams but also down the stretch deal with some adversity and overcome that yeah, and, and, and we dealt with some adversity down there with Keeley not feeling well, and so just a shorter bench. And, you know, I think more than anything is just growing up. A couple of weeks ago when we was feeling not good, it's like we just have to get better as a team. And so as you get continue to get better and do some of the smaller things and the little things well, whether it be just boxing out or whether it be taking care of the ball better or whether it be just setting up screens or setting the right angle screens, those, kind of, those things matter. Um, I showed the team a few weeks ago, or not maybe a week ago, uh, a simple free throw line box out against Sac State where, where we were in the right place. And if we weren't, they would have had the ball and it might have turned out different for us. Those things matter and we're doing those things better. And so that gives you a better chance to win. Now, some fun things happened afterwards. Well, you beat Northern Arizona. Sounds like you, you met a pretty special guest on this road trip and yeah. Kenny Maine, the former Sports Center anchor. Can you just walk us through uh, how you guys were able to get some ice cream and just kind of have some yeah. fun with all that with him? Yeah, Kenny's great. You know, I mean, for Nate and I, half the girls didn't know who he was, of course. You know, they know all the pop people, but for Nate and I, we were like in awe. And he's from Federal Way, and I originally went to high school in Federal Way, so that was a cool connection. But he was on our flight from, uh, from Denver to Phoenix and going to the Super Bowl, of course. And, and Nate started talking to him, and then by the end, by the time we got our baggage, Nate's got 200 bucks from him to get some pizza. He, he's like, get some pizza. And so, you know, Brock Heward has a connection there with the broadcasting stuff. And so then, you know, we, we didn't end up eating, having pizza, but after the game, we're like, hey, let's go get some ice cream. And then I texted him and said, hey, thank you. And, and then it goes from there. You know, he tweets to all his followers. And so it was a fun thing. You know, he's an icon and somebody like in your field that is, is uh, to me is like one of the original guys that came up with the catchphrases. Right. I was about to say, did he say any catchphrases for you? Did he give nah, you he didn't say anything. He didn't say anything that we were, me and Nate were both looking up all his, because it's been a while since he's been, you know, in, in that kind of role. And so we were all like, oh, Yahtzee and all these different things he said over the years. And, and uh, it was funny to think back to our childhood watching him. Right, yeah. Kind of a fun little experience of it this, yeah. for this, obviously. And then, you know, to get a couple of wins, I mean, this is four in a row now for this team. Does it feel like the team has maybe turned a little bit of a corner and maybe playing its best basketball right now as February is here? Yeah, yeah. We want to be playing our best now. Uh, that was the goal. And I don't think we're playing our best yet, to be honest. Um, I think we're headed there. Uh, I told the team, I, you know, I didn't think we played our best down there. Uh, defensively, we made a bunch of mistakes. Uh, offensively, we are playing pretty well. But uh, I, I still feel like there's more. Uh, for our team and so I hope going forward you know big games this weekend um, I hope going forward that we continue to improve. In these games this weekend you guys swept Idaho State and Weber on the road earlier this year so you know momentum harnessing it how do you kind of go forward uh, and try to keep that uh, role going? Big weekend, American Heart Association. We're celebrating that on, on Thursday. Keeley obviously is a spokesperson for them, and that's a big deal. We'll be wearing shirts. And then obviously on Saturday, expecting a big crowd because they're going to name the court off of Robin Selvig, which is well-deserved and, and overdue. Yeah, that, it's, it's a big weekend. I think more than anything, we're just, again, continue to play good basketball. It's going to be fun to be at home after the long road trip. Uh, I think everybody's excited for that. And we, we want to keep improving. We know good things will happen if we just continue to get better and better and better as a team. 
Big weekend of basketball here in Missoula as the Lady Grizz are in town on Thursday and Saturday with Idaho State and Weber State. Brian, thanks so much for your time, and don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on Grizzly Insider. Take coverage of the Grizz with you. Download our app for your favorite mobile device today. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider. There's six more conference games for Montana, and as mentioned, it's the women who are home this week with Idaho State on Thursday and Weber State on Saturday. Meanwhile, the men will be on the road to Pocatello on Thursday and in Ogden on Saturday. Thanks so much for tuning into this week's Grizzly Insider, and we'll see you next week. Have a great evening, everyone.